Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to use an Arduino to communicate with a Raspberry Pi using a serial connection. So this can be very valuable to you because basically you can use a Raspberry Pi to store information coming in from your Arduino in a standard way that you would in a normal computer, right? So when you're dealing with an Arduino, again, all this is is a microcontroller, so you can use a data logging module in order to be able to store data in something like a CSV file, basically a standard text file with all the values are separated by commas. But you really, in order to store data, it can be pretty difficult when you're just using an Arduino. But if you can automatically send out the information that the Arduino is reading to a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is a full-fledged computer. What that means is you can have MySQL uh, installed onto your Raspberry Pi, you can have MariaDB, you can have MongoDB, you can have whatever type of database software that will run on the Raspberry Pi on your Raspberry Pi and so all of the readings coming into your Arduino can be sent to the Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi can then process that information and then store it into whatever type of database you want or any kind of other data store also the Raspberry Pi once it takes the values coming in from the Arduino uh, in the in the serial communication and turns that into values for a variable it can then test against those values for a variable to do things such as do API calls to something like Twilio, right? So basically, when I have my, my little Arduino here, let's say the temperature goes above a certain degree. So let's say I have a little temperature sensor Arduino, an environmental sensor, and let's say the temperature goes above 100 degrees. So the Arduino, it might be able to turn on a fan, so it can do that. It can turn on a light, it can turn on a buzzer. There are a lot of things that the Arduino can do, but you may need some other types of actions that you need something more than a microcontroller. So by this communicating with a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi can pull in that value. It can see the value is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it can trigger a script uh, that makes such a Twilio API call to send out an SMS mes message to your administrators, right? And that's one of the cool things is by having the Arduino communicate with a Raspberry Pi, now you get a full-fledged computer that's able to do processing, that's able to store data, that's able to make API calls so on and so forth. So in today's class, I'm going to simply be showing you how you can read uh, from the serial uh, communication from the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi. We're simply going to print that out on the screen at this point, but all you have to understand is basically we are printing out the value for a variable. So right now we're going to be printing out the value on the screen, but again, since it's now going to be a variable, you could test against it, you could store it into a database, so on and so forth. So that is the class we're going to be doing today. So there's no real warning warnings for today's projects. You just simply need to have a basic understanding of how to code and build projects for the Arduino, and you need a basic understanding of the Raspberry Pi and Python code. This is all very simple beginner level uh, skills that you need, but you do need those basic skills. The one place where you might screw, get screwed up with this particular project is the actual connection we're going to be writing into the Python code. So we're going to be using TTY ACM0. So that is the idea identifier uh, for the for the Arduino so that the Python uh, script can communicate with the Arduino and pull out the information one of the things just to realize is if you're uh, if you're playing around with a project and then you decide to unplug the Arduino uh, and then replug it back in it would that that number will iterate by one and it will go to TTY ACM1 instead of being ACM0 uh, it's just one of those things so if you're just sitting there and let's say you're playing around you're getting the readouts uh, from the Arduino. You go, oh, I want I want to modify that code a little bit. You know, change what the the serial output will be. So you unplug your Arduino from the Raspberry Pi. You plug it into whatever computer you have your Arduino IDE on. You modify the code. You upload the code. You then unplug it and plug it back into the, the Raspberry Pi. Just realize most likely uh, the connection will simply iterate up by one. So basically, if you plug it back in, you hit run, and for some reason it fails out. Just go to that ACM zero change it to ACM1 and most likely it will work for you. So with that, let's go over uh, to the workbench. I'll actually show you how, uh, how this project looks once we are finished. Then I will show you how to build the project and how to write the code. 
So here's the finished project and I will show you the results. So basically here is my Arduino Uno. This is connected to a simply an analog temperature sensor. I then have a USB cable here that is connecting from the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi. It is important to know the Raspberry Pi then is giving power to the Arduino so you don't need any kind of other power connections. And so this is the, the basic physical setup here. So what I'm having is the, the Arduino, basically it's reading what the analog temperature sensor is telling it it is then printing that out so that that serial dot print or the serial dot print line it's printing that out and we're having the raspberry pi using this python script being able to read what that serial output is so if all i do here is i click on the run button so this is now running and so this down here this is the output that is coming from the arduino uh, if I put my finger on the uh, the temperature sensor, we can see the temperature sensor now goes up. So now we're in 65, 66, so on and so forth. This is one of the reasons I like using the analog temperature sensor. It's just an easy way to give me a dynamic sensor to play with, just to verify that the readings that I'm I'm getting are truly new and aren't aren't some kind of like old readings that are just simply getting replicated. So basically, what we can see here is that the uh, Arduino is telling us what the volts are. It's telling us what the degree in Celsius are and it's telling us what the degrees in Fahrenheit are and so all that's happening is the Arduino is simply printing this out that serial dot print and print line that is getting sent to the Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi is then able to read it using this Python script so with that I'll just get I'll just take a second to show you how this project gets built and then I will show you the code so here's a physical build for this particular project and there's really not a lot to it. Essentially, we're just using the uh, analog temperature sensor project that we've used in the past. We have this being connected to our Arduino Uno. So this is just a standard Arduino Uno board. Uh, it's going to the five volt, it's going to the ground and it's going to the analog zero, the A0 connection on the Arduino. Then from there, basically we just simply have a short little USB cable here. The USB cable is going from the Arduino into the Raspberry Pi and then in the Raspberry Pi, we just have the standard monitor connections, keyboard, mouse, so on and so forth. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, I am using the default uh, standard installation. So basically, I just simply use the Raspberry Pi imager. I image the operating system onto the Raspberry Pi, and then I updated it to today's current date. So basically, what I'm showing you now is a simple, clean installation. You shouldn't need to do install anything else on the Raspberry Pi in order to make this work. Python will already be installed. Thani will already be install the serial uh, connection module will already be installed uh, so this is all that's required in order to build this project um, and with that let's go over and first we're going to just take a quick look at the arduino code uh, and then i will go over the the python code with you so here's the Arduino sketch that we're dealing with today. It is important to understand all we really care about is that we're printing out something on the serial connection. So if you have another sketch that's already created, a light sensor sketch, a water sensor sketch, a distance sensor sketch, whatever else, if it's printing something out to the serial monitor, that will be fine. All we need to really do here is basically do the serial.begin and then do serial.print. That's all we really care about. So if you have a different project, you can use that. And again, if you want to play around with different projects, it's very easy to do. Uh, we're using the temperature sensor here just simply because it's, it's very, I find it to be a very easy, easy uh, little sensor to use for these types of projects to verify things are working properly. Anyways, up here, we're simply going to be defining the analog uh, pin that we're going to be connecting to for the analog temperature sensor uh, that is going to get connected to analog pin zero. Then down here, the important thing is within the setup, serial.begin. You got to you gotta begin the serial communication and we're setting it to a speed of 9600. Now, 9600 is kind of like the default standard in the Arduino world. There may be a reason to modify that. We are leaving it with 9600. The important important thing for the code today and for projects going in the future is this has to match what you put in the Python script. So in the Python script, you are going to define what speed the communication is at. And so this, this here, this number here, and what is in your Python script has to be the same, right? If it's not the same, it'll probably fail out. So that's the only thing. Begin your serial connection and begin it with the same speed that you're going to plug into your Python script. Down here, we're going to go into the loop. Uh, basically, all of this here is just simply the calculations to turn the 
uh, voltage coming in from the analog temperature sensor into a temperature uh, Celsius and a temperature Fahrenheit value. So we can print those out. Uh, and then we're going to come down here and this is where we're actually printing uh, serial printing out the information. So we'll do serial.print the value for voltage. And then we're going to do serial print and then we're simply going to say volts. So it'll say like, you know, 13 volts space hyphen and then the, it'll do serial.print the value for temperature C and then it'll say discrete C space hyphen then serial.print the uh, value for temperature F uh, space uh, and then this is print line so basically it'll go to the next line uh, and then it says degrees F and then what we're going to do here is we're going to delay for one second so again this is just a very simple uh, project the main thing that we're trying to do is simply print something out to the serial connection and we're going to be printing it out at that 9600 speed so let's go over to the actual Python script to see what's going on there so here we are at my Raspberry Pi. Again, it's a standard default installation. I simply use the Raspberry Pi imager to install the operating system onto the micro SD card. And then once I booted up the uh, Raspberry Pi, I simply uh, updated it to whatever the, the, the standard uh, updates are. Uh, so basically, Thani is the default standard Thani. Python is the de default standard uh, Python. There were no additional modules that have been had to be installed or anything like this. This is just a plain vanilla installation of, of the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, uh, so in order to get to uh, the uh, Thani, basically you go up to Raspberry Pi, a little icon up here, you go to programming, you go to Thani Python IDE, and this is where we get our IDE. From there, all we have to do is simply write uh, about 10 lines of code. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import the serial library. So this gives us, uh, or the module, so this gives us a library uh, for all the serial communication. So we can actually read uh, from the, the serial communication. We're then going to do the if in name equals main. And then under that, we are then going to create our variable for the, the serial connection. So SER, this is how we're going to reference a serial connection going forward, and that is going to equal serial, all lowercase, period, uppercase s, serial, and then we're going to plug in all of the information. So basically, this is the connection, dev forward slash uh, TTY ACM0. Then we're going to be uh, setting it to the 9600 speed. Again, it doesn't matter really what speed this is, more or less, as long as this speed matches what's in the Arduino code, right? So this has to match what's in the Arduino code. Arduino code has to match with this. The final thing is we're simply going to put a timeout here for the communication. So if the Arduino locks up for some reason, communication locks up for some reason, basically this will simply time out after one second uh, so everything doesn't freeze up on us. Now, in order to get this uh, TTY ACM0, now to be clear, if you're using a standard Raspberry Pi, you should just be able to copy and paste this code that I'm giving you. But just in case, uh, if you need to figure out where you can get that information, you can go to terminal. Once you've uh, gone to terminal, what you can then do is list then you do forward slash dev forward slash TTY star, hit enter, and this will give you all the TTY connections, and you're going to be looking for this. So TTY ACM0. Again, for some reason, this may iterate up to ACM1. So you may have to use the ACM1 just in case. So if you run the script, if everything looks fine and, and it's not running, this most likely has iterated up. So basically you've unplugged the uh, the Arduino, plugged it back in. Maybe you have multiple Arduinos plugged in. Not quite sure why, but this it will either be ACM0 uh, or ACM1. If you use uh, a Linux machine, so a standard Linux machine, this may actually be like a USB connection right here, but we'll do that in a different class. This is what we're looking for. Do not do AMA. So AMA0, this is the blue Bluetooth stack that you're dealing with and the rest of these we're just simply not going to worry about it's not part of our project today uh, then what we're going to do is the the the, uh, the variable that we've created that connection we're simply going to flush the buffer on that uh, so that's all nice and clean and then we're going to go down to the while loop so while true so we are setting this while loop to continuously be true so it's just gonna keep looping 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 and so but we're gonna say here if and then the serial connection so that serial connection that we've created up here if in waiting, so basically if clients or communication in waiting is greater than zero, so if there's something there, then what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable named line. We are going to set the value of that variable to the read line. So ser dot read line. So this read line function is going to read whatever's coming in through the serial connection. We are going to decode it to utf hyphen eight. So basically, hopefully the text will come out in a version of the text we can actually read. And then we are going to run this through our 
strip at the end. So the rstrip function will rip out extraneous uh, trailing characters, so generally like a space. So in the project today, you probably don't actually need the rstrip because all we're doing is we're um, we're printing out just a, a line of text. We're printing out a string. But it's important to understand, if all you're doing is passing variables, so what if I was just passing the temperature number, just the variable itself? And then within this Python script, I was going to test against that variable number. Well, if, if I'm trying to test against, let's say, 100, again, 100 is different than a 100 space. 100 space is a different thing. So it's like, if this is equal, well, it'll never be equal because if it's passing 100 space, then you run into problems. So again, whenever you're passing a variable information, especially between different devices or whatever, make sure to strip out things like white space so that you don't run into things where basically conditions are never true, right? So basically that's that's why the R strip is here. Then all we're doing from that point is print and then the value of line. So the line value we've created here, we're reading from this connection, we're decoding it, and we're stripping out the extraneous uh, trailing uh, white space. Then again, as I've shown you before, all you do is you click run, and then basically that's that's what we're getting. So uh, it's printing out the information that's coming in from the Arduino. Uh, I will touch the temperature sen sensor just so I can show you that this is live, this is dynamic. And so we can see it's going up 67, 68, 69. Uh, then I take my finger off and it should start going down. So it's down to 67, 66. So this is all that's required to make this particular project work. Again, the most important thing here, again, th this particular project, whatever, it's 10 lines of code, it doesn't really matter a lot. The important thing here is this right here. So we are creating a variable. We are assigning the value of that variable from what's coming into the serial connection. And once again, once I have a value in a variable, at this point, I can dump this into a MySQL database. At this point, I can dump this into other kinds of data stores. With this, I can test against it to see whether or not I, whether or not I need to fire off an SMS message, right? The most important thing is that you're simply assigning a value to this variable. Past that, you know, whatever comes after this, that's when it gets really interesting. Today, all I'm doing is printing it out on the screen. So that's all there is uh, to this particular project. Project. So now you know how to read a serial communication from your Arduino with the Raspberry Pi. Again, basically, uh, you simply connect the two together using a USB cable. Whatever sensors you have connected to your Arduino, you format all the values however you want. You print them out using the serial communication, serial.print and serial.print line. That will then get sent. The Raspberry Pi will be able to read that information, will be able to turn that into a value in its own variable, and then it can do parsing and storing and if else's and conditionals and all of that kind of stuff. So this is really interesting. Now, some people out there wonder, well, why, why would I use a Raspberry Pi to read the serial communication from an Arduino? A Raspberry Pi that has GPIO pins itself, uh, the Arduino that can do some computation itself. Why would you connect these two things together? The first thing to realize is that simply with an Arduino, you can have a metric crap ton more GPIO pins than you can have in your Raspberry Pi. Your Raspberry Pi has a few GPIO pins that you can use. Uh, if you use an Arduino Mega Board, you can have 54 digital pins. Uh, so if you wanted to have 54 different types of sensors for whatever your particular project is, you can have all of that information getting, getting pulled into the Arduino. The Arduino could simply plug that into an array. So instead of printing out volts and Celsius and all that, it could literally just print an array and send that array to the, to the Raspberry Pi, the Python script could then parse that particular array and then test or store information based off of that. So that's one of the things that makes uh, having the having the Raspberry Pi connected to the Arduino uh, pretty interesting is because you can get all that computational power in the Raspberry Pi and all the GPIO pins out of the Arduino and have them come together. Now, when you use something like I am here, I'm using the, the uh, Raspberry Pi 4B. So this is kind of an expensive Raspberry Pi. It's like a $45 Raspberry Pi. So you're sitting there going, well, wait a minute, I'm spending $40 on an Arduino Uno and $45 on a, on a uh, Raspberry Pi. And at a certain point, I could just buy my own computer. One thing to realize, though, is again, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you everything using using equipment that I know that works and I know that'll, that'll work optimal for, for the projects that we're doing. But building a project like this, you can make it a lot less expensive. You could get a generic Arduino Uno board for like $5 off of Amazon, right? 
Not only that, but with Raspberry Pi, I'm using the 4B, but you could use uh, like the Raspberry Pi Zeros. The Raspberry Pi Zero only costs $10, right? So if you got an Arduino for $5 and a Raspberry Pi Zero for $10, right? All of a sudden you could create a project like this for $20 and that starts making a little bit more sense uh, from, from a price point. So what I want you thinking about right now is more of how can you use the Arduino as a subsystem? So so how can you use it as a subsystem for sensor arrays? So again, let, let's say you had a vehicle that was running around, right? So you want to have an autonomous vehicle. So that autonomous vehicle might need, you know, 20 different ultrasonic distance sensors. Plus it might need 10 different uh, infrared sensors. Plus it may need a couple of bump sensors. Plus you add a couple of other motion sensors or whatever. All of a sudden it gets pretty easy to get up to like 50 different uh, different uh, digital pins that you'll need for your particular project. And so basically with that autonomous vehicle, you can have all of that connected into an Arduino uh, mega board, right? And that mega board can then process everything coming in uh, from all of those sensors. Again, send that up as an array instead of a string, send that up to as an array to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi could then process, again, based off of all of those 54 different sensors, plus whatever code you plug in, it could figure out what the most appropriate action to take is. And then the cool part, the cool part is, is then the Raspberry Pi can then actually send the commands, uh, again, using the serial communication back to an Arduino and then have that Arduino uh, you know, take specific action. So you could have you could have a subsystem of an array of sensors using one Arduino, and you could have a, a subsystem for motor controls with another Arduino, or maybe even on the first Arduino. And basically, information can go from the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi can process it and then send appropriate commands back. This is how you get uh, a real, a really cool, cool project again for autonomous vehicles and and larger, more more powerful devices that you might be trying to create. So if you want to go out, uh, definitely start playing with this particular project. Again, uh, any, any Arduino project that is outputting using the serial monitor you can use uh, for this particular project. You grab the Raspberry Pi, you plug in the Python code, and you should be good to go. So as always, I enjoyed doing this class, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.